Hi there, thanks for joining today. We're just gonna give it a few more minutes for a few more folks to sign on and then we'll get started right, right at one o'clock. Hi everyone, welcome to the TBR webinar series. Um, today myself, Stephanie Long, and Nikki Catchpole will be discussing some of the niche and nimble players within the enterprise edge space. So before we get started, um, I just wanted to cover a few housekeeping things. At the bottom of your screens, you'll see a series of buttons from left to right. You can access the slides, audio controls, Q&A, speaker bios, and also our survey. Um, after the webinar, you will receive an email with a replay link, um, as well as a link to view and register for other TBR webinars. And we have some cool upcoming um, webinars as well, especially in January. Um, we do a whole series on um, predictions for 2021. And um, I've seen a bit of what some of my analyst colleagues have in the works there. And with the prevalence of COVID, I think those are going to be some, some really interesting webinars, more so than typical. So you may want to check those out. Um, the, 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 those will be coming out um, in the in January timeframe. So if you have any questions for us, please submit them via that Q&A widget on the bottom of the screen. Um, and you can also reach out to us after the event at webinars at tbri.com. Um, and if you'd like to receive the deck after this webinar, um, please email uh, webinars at tbri.com to request the deck and, and uh, someone will send it along to you from there. Okay, so like I said, um, I'm Stephanie Long. I'm one of the lead analysts at TBR covering the data center market. Um, so that includes the more traditional data center approach, as well as some of the emerging topics like edge, hyperscale, high performance computing, and edge and um, quantum computing. And um, Nikki, Catchpole, and I have teamed up to bring our individual expertise together to track the enterprise edge market. She's um, one of the lead analysts on the cloud team here at TBR and tracks a variety of aspects of that space. So um, as you're likely aware, the infrastructure as well as the cloud are both key pieces of the overall edge story. Um, and many of the slides we're going to prevent to present to you today are featured in our enterprise edge market landscape um, and that published back in September. So if you're interested in learning how to gain access to that research, you can shoot either of us an email, drop a note in the Q&A or email webinars at tbri.com um, and, and we'll be sure to follow up with you. And the same goes with questions today um, pertaining to the webinar. You can shoot, shoot us a note in the Q&A section on this um, webinar, but if you have a question that comes up after the webinar ends, feel free to reach out to us via email. We're happy to follow up um, and get you answers to your questions. 
Okay, so the primary focus of our webinar today is to highlight some of the niche and more nimble vendors um, in the enterprise edge space. Now, I want to just, just mention up front, um, niche and nimble, we're referring specifically to edge portfolios there when we're talking about this. So we're talking about this in the context of the enterprise edge space, even though some vendors may have capabilities that span other um, industries as well. So, um, so we do use we use that niche term. It's a bit a bit loosely, um, but anyway, um, we'll also highlight some evolving use cases as a result of um, COVID, and we'll give you an overview of how um, we see the enterprise edge market. Um, so, with that, um, I'm going to jump over to our taxonomy because, as as anybody who works in the enterprise edge compute space knows, um, everyone defines edge a little bit differently. So. Just to ground you in how Nikki and I and TBR look at this market, um, just wanted to sort of show, um, show our taxonomy here. So just to set the stage. So um, the edge market has many different, de different definitions. Um, we, we at TBR, we try to strip the bias out of, of those definitions. Many vendors in the space have definitions skewed to suit their own agendas. Um, so we, we have done some research to you know, strip out some of those biases and, and come back with this one, um, this one more, more third party type view. So, um, but, but common themes we hear that come up a lot when we talk about edge is looking at it as a pendulum, a spectrum, or uh, a market where the future is not quite known yet. So these are the types of things that pop up a lot when we're talking about edge. And so, um, so we, we include that, that sort of mindset when we when we when we research the topic so a um, couple of things I just want to highlight here is um, we don't believe that edge will replace the cloud rather we think that they'll they'll work sort of in tandem um, to maximize the functionality of each individually and latency and the subsequent insights drawn out of using things like analytics are a critical element of the edge so um, so TBR therefore we define the enterprise edge compute um, market as being within 30 miles of data generation sources or 10 milliseconds of latency. And the reason why 10 milliseconds is the line in the sand there is because um, it's the maximum threshold for um, low latency services. So um, items in the edge compute taxonomy include data center equipment, like servers, clusters, gateways, storage, networking, interconnect, things like that. Um, as well as services that are attached to or related to the infrastructure close to the box software, um, such as data center infrastructure management software, things like that um, are included in, in what we talk about. Um, and then, so this is the last taxonomy slide here. Um, so on this slide, you can see there are aspects of the far edge, which is the part of the edge that we model in our data. Um, so the left two, the two leftmost aspects, um, we don't model those in our data, but we do include them in our qualitative coverage of the market um, because we found it very challenging to, to completely ignore that section of the space and still talk about it um, intelligently. So, so we don't include those aspects in our data, but we do include them in our qualitative analysis. Um, and so, And so just before we dive into some of those niche and number players we want to highlight for you today, I just, um, we're going to, I'm going to give you an overview of some of the findings from our most recent publication um, of this landscape. Okay, so um, I just want to share with you our, our market forecast for the edge opportunity here. Um, so you'll see that there is a light green bar and a, and a dark green bar. So the light green is the, what we cover in the enterprise edge compute market, Nikki and I. The, um, I'm sorry, the dark green is what Nikki and I cover. The light green is what is covered in our telecom edge compute uh, research stream, which comes out of the telecom group and is um, led by uh, principal analyst Chris Antlitz. So, so if you want further details on the, the telecom angle, something that TBR certainly has plenty of insights on, um, but not in the purview of what Nikki and I specifically cover. Um, so, so in that space within the market, we're seeing some shifting spending habits um, due to COVID. Um, we don't think that that's going to be a long-term challenge, but we do know that a lot of businesses needed to adapt their IT to meet remote work demands. So in some cases, this bolstered edge spend as people had to move compute closer to the edge to accommodate these demands that were put on others. Um, and 
and stay functional while complying with new guidelines. Um, things like uh, we, we're all impacted by it, you know, working from home when we weren't before. Um, things like that ha cause caused some um, infrastructure needed to be shifted around to be accommodated. Um, so edge use cases are also going to be adapted now to meet some of these demands for COVID-19, like people counting socially distance, um, monitoring social distancing, monitoring mask wearing, temperature checking. These are things that you can all do through um, existing video surveillance equipment, for example, um, in a retail facility. And maybe that surveillance system was used to monitor theft prevention before, but now it's going to be used to monitor to make sure that COVID protocols are being met. Um, so that's sort of the overview that I had for you on um, how we look at the market. Um, and I'm going to hand it over to Nikki now to give you an overview of some of the use cases we dove into in this most recent um, round of research. So take it away, Nikki. Thank you, Stephanie, for the introduction and for kind of setting that foundational stage for the rest of the report. Um, now that the use cases are, um, they were plentiful before the COVID hit, and I, I have to say they are so vast and so interesting that we can't possibly even scratch the surface. But, um, you know, as Stephanie mentioned, um, you know, we'd be remiss to not have at least one slide that specifically um, mentions COVID-19, which you know, goes without saying has clearly accelerated um, digital transformation timelines for pretty much every enterprise, changing the ways in which we interact and consume data. Um, you know, back in February, when Stephanie and I hosted our first webinar on Edge, we featured a range of cases that reinforced how edge computing was already becoming increasingly relevant in a world where things like low latency, advanced analytics, and intelligent data mining were gaining a lot of momentum across a wide range of industries, even despite um, a healthy dose of a healthy dose of skepticism. Uh, and of course, application of edge computing since March has received a spotlight, um, as Stephanie mentioned, in certain critical industries. Um, healthcare and manufacturing are being two that always rise to the top. Um, you know, providing use cases in areas that are applicable, such as um, worker safety, either in the field or in the office, as well as enhanced productivity in this whole new era of being remote. And yeah, as Stephanie also mentioned, what's really interesting is that some of the new challenge-driven use cases are just a reorienting and repurposing of use cases that already existed. So for instance, earlier this year, I spoke about how um, brick and mortar retailers were starting to implement some interesting tactics to improve the overall shopping experience and draw people back into stores. And uh, now, of course, quite the opposite is true. I, I don't think um, anyone is running out to go to a shopping center these days, but that's not to say that the same edge device that was strategically placed around high traffic areas in malls to say control shopping patterns can't be more widely applied to help manage social distancing in smart cities. We're hearing a whole lot about edge in smart cities um, to influence the timing around the loosening or tightening of regulations, um, the facilitation of population monitoring by analyzing foot traffic patterns, and all rolling up to help implement um, quarantine compliance. So now in this next section, um, Stephanie and I will speak to some of the leading cloud and software vendors um, that you'll be more than familiar with. And this will also be our way of introducing some of those um, niche or specialized vendors that you may or may not know about. Um, the main crux of what we will be addressing um, is new announcements and updates for a couple of the well-known we've covered before, as well as what we described as the niche or quote unquote industry disruptors, um, which are generally much smaller and very specific in terms of the value that they bring to the table, um, you know, both as isolated solutions and in some cases from a partnership perspective. Um, in general, the overall notion of niche technologies that buck trends or do not really fit into these pre-labeled boxes um, can be really frustrating for some. And, uh, as an analyst, I would say for some, especially in the analyst community, where kind of rigid categorization is a helpful tool for us, and um, edge is really hard to categorize, um, to, say the to say the least. Um, covering vendors that could be considered to be disruptors is actually a really fitting term for a technology like edge, just because it's so hard to define anyway and means so many things to so many different people, and is also symbolic in many ways of what the world is going through today. Um, one of the vendors we spoke to during the summer, um, I'd noted this down, said it best, 
with a quote, um, what better time to be a disruptor than in an era of immense disruption? I really love this, even though there's so many things not to love. Now, this all boils down to the fact that the question of what edge is or why people should care is not an uncommon one, and it is the emerging and niche players that are actually starting to help us figure that out. And it's something that we'll delve a bit more deeply into with discussion around um, Clearblade and isolation, as well as their partnership with IBM, as well as a company called Pixium that was acquired by Siemens, um, among others. So this next slide is an overview. It's basically from our um, table of contents from the um, Enterprise Edge Market Landscape that we published in September and will be coming out in its third edition in February next year. Um, this will look different in February, and that's really to get to the heart. Oh, I think the slide didn't progress. Um, one second. Sorry, guys, for the delay. All right, there we go. Okay, I'll start again. Um, so this next slide is an overview of the different vendors that we profiled in our last um, iteration of the edge market landscape. And while you will see some of the same companies featured again when we publish in February, we will also keep adding to this list as we're always looking to interview new players as the market um, constantly evolves. And um, it's important to note, because um, we've been asked before, by no means is the list here meant to be representative of what we think the entire landscape of vendors is out there. On the left are the cloud and hardware vendors who we consider to be the founding members of the report. They're the ones we initially featured and will continue to update rem and remain engaged with. And it's also with many of these, it's not just Edge that we speak about. And in the second iteration of the report, as you look to the right side of the screen with niche players, we extended our research to incorporate what was happening with players who are smaller and more specific in their capabilities, or again, those niche disruptors as we called them before. Uh, in the course of doing so, we were able to have some pretty interesting conversations that helped to inform our view of the market as a whole, as well as where some of the emerging players were focusing. And since they are so much more nimble and able to respond to market dynamics quickly, um, it's our thought that it can sometimes indicate where the market is going in general, and it's just another reason to keep a close eye on some of these smaller players. So now with that, I'm going to pass the mic over to Stephanie to start our vendor discussion with some recent updates and announcements from HPE. All right, thanks. Thanks, Nikki. Let me, oh, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I know that it's probably surprising that we talk about um, a vendor as large and diverse as HP on, on a webinar having to do with um, niche vendors, but um, HP had a recent announcement around um, GreenLake that related to the edge that we felt was um, pretty interesting, and we wanted to we wanted to highlight it, um, and specifically how it pertains to um, VDI. So on this slide, we have I've, I've projected for you just sort of the highlights of this announcement they had at an event um, last week called Workplace Next where this all came out. And um, and so it, it's basically taking existing capabilities that they already had and repackaging them into solutions that uh, address pain points related to COVID, um, relating to working and working safely in, in this pandemic field environment. Um, so, um, <clears throat> The, so we threw the highlights up on the slide, but basically the key points are really reinforced um, are the VDI offering. So this is a big deal as a lot of customers want VDI and don't want it necessarily to be in the public cloud because of fear for um, risks and security concerns that the public cloud um, continues to carry as a sort of a black mark despite um, despite efforts from public cloud vendors to mitigate those. So. Um, so HP's VDI offerings, they're not necessarily unique per se within the market, and neither is um, HP GreenLake. There are other uh, vendors that have competing offerings to that as well. Um, but um, GreenLake has a heck of a lot more visibility than some of those competing offerings, um, and it's seen as more mature as a result. So to tie that in with these VDI capabilities, and you've got a recipe for um, some tough competition to HP's benefit at the edge um, for VDI offerings. So another advantage, um, to this announcement is how it's been marketed. HPE chose to lead with the outcomes in that marketing effort. So um, it talks to you about like the hybrid employee versus a manufacturing employee, things like that. Um, and we're finding that that type of approach resonates with customers um, because especially right now, the the panic uh, evolution, the, the panic-based digital transformation to keep things afloat because of COVID, um, customers want 
to know the outcome and they don't particularly care how they get there as long as they get what they need. So if you couple that with the ability to finance this offering like a public cloud through GreenLake, then it makes a pretty compelling offering at the edge. Um, and the, the other vendor that um, I wanted to highlight today um, also doesn't necessarily fit in with that the, the, the true meaning of niche, but um, we felt was making some some shakeups we wanted to highlight as well is um, Lumen Technologies. And so the main reason I wanted to highlight Lumen was uh, because they recently went through a rebranding. They used to be CenturyLink. So if you aren't familiar um, with that change, and, and often what we see when a rebranding comes out, so do a lot of um, subsequent announcements. Um, they, they come to follow. So if you follow our edge research or follow TBRI, check out our, our blogs and, and our next publication of this report. We'll be including Lumen and we'll be tracking some of the upcoming announcements we're expecting to come out after following that rebranding. Um, so, but what I wanted to highlight here were some of the um, use cases that Lumen can offer at the edge. So um, one of them was smart manufacturing. Um, so in their smart manufacturing capabilities, they're not um, generally speaking, they're not necessarily um, unique, but uh, many vendors have offerings like this, but um, Lumen can tie together the OEM hardware um, with its own assets, and that is, um, that's a desirable capability at the edge. Um, because one of the problems with edge installments is that in a lot of cases, they are very reactive, not proactive. And so as that results in a bunch of disparate offerings being, you know, taped together with like band-aids and glue, so to speak, they're, they're not structured to work together. They're built differently separately and then forced to work together. Um, and so working with a vendor that can tie those things together is pretty valuable to end customers. Um, and Lumen is also, um, and they're not the only vendor that does that, but they are marketing it pretty well. Um, and so that's why um, it's important to note here. And um, so for this use case, Lumen offers um, real-time control of equipment leveraging, um, edge resources, integration of diverse networking protocols over managed Wi-Fi networks, high capacity bandwidth links that are necessary, especially um, in rural locations like agriculture use cases, um, and then data storage that you can store, you can store now, and then you could, you could in theory leverage it later to analyze, um, which that's also can be valuable um, as AI capabilities become more advanced, but it can also be a bit of a, a handcuff because storing the data builds up quickly and storing it can become expensive. And so just a few more quick things to highlight here. Um, I wanted to highlight that um, they have a play in the, in the financial services vertical and a geographical proximity of data can be important in financial services, as uh, many of you may already know. Um, the GDPR makes it especially important in the EU. And so things like that um, and things that pertain to trading and needing that low latency to make it successful. So um, Lumen's network management capabilities can, can ease some of those challenges um, at the edge for a financial services um, vertical. Um, and similarly, those same technologies can be leveraged in the healthcare space to, um, to ease those latency challenges as well. Um, and I chose to highlight um, that they had those healthcare vertical capabilities, given the fact that COVID is um, top of mind for many people and um, at least at least in the states, we're seeing some increases in, in those cases, which is gonna increase that burden on hospital systems. and um, Easing that, easing those challenges, leveraging edge technology is, is something that can, can be done. Okay, so um, that was my, uh, my last slide. I'm going to kick it back to Nikki so she can um, take you through some more um, niche vendor um, use cases, examples. Thank you, Steph. Thank you, Stephanie. And um, just one last non-niche vendor before we actually get to the niche vendors. Um, I'm just going to do a quick coverage over um, IBM, which is, of course, another one of the leading vendors that TBR keeps a close pulse on. Um, they really exemplify so many of the leading trends driving the edge, the cloud, and a whole host of the other emerging technologies that I personally track and are also certainly no stranger to um, change themselves. So always something interesting happening when I'm speaking with IBM. Um, an overview of what they're doing in this space, the space being edge, and some of the underlying tenets that guide their strategy is also important to know and will help us set the stage for the section where um, I speak specifically about the partnerships that um, they have recently implemented with um, ClearBlade. First, it goes without saying that IBM is of course, has 
of course, a strong history of open standards with a technology ecosystem and projects that are largely formed through the Linux Foundation. Um, such collaborative standards development and compliance are at the core of IBM strategy and is proven by the whole array of partnerships that support open industry innovation and go-to-market efforts. IBM Edge Application Manager is an autonomous solution that addresses the management at significant scale at the edge and is essentially the commercial distribution of Open Horizon and is really key and core to IBM's overall edge compute, case, edge compute play. The use case for Edge Application Manager is rooted in the reality that the number of devices and servers has increased dramatically and that when clients adopt Edge topologies, in many cases they'll have to manage not just hundreds, but thousands of servers or tens of thousands of devices, which are constantly being added to. Um, this, the existing management approaches were just simply not built for this type of environment. And there is the resulting need to standardize and normalize the technique for creating applications and management styles to get the right workloads to the right clients and at the right time while still controlling the build out of scale. So what IBM has created in response with IBM Edge Application Manager is an autonomous solution that deploys secures and scales business applications and AI analytics across a full spectrum of edge deployments. And you know, another kind of uh, feature or application worth mentioning here in conjunction is uh, IBM Maximo Worker Insights. It's uh, one of the applications that works with Edge Application Manager and is a great example to show how vendors have rapidly deployed solutions in reaction to the pandemic and brought them to market very quickly. So for instance, um, here with Maximo Worker Insights and Edge Application Manager, IBM is able to aggregate alerts to worker safety concerns, um, mash alerts to a t 2D site map, um, which creates a heat map to notify supervisors if, for instance, employees and clients are not wearing their face masks properly, if there's any issue with temperature, or if there's any kind of breaking of social distancing guidelines. So kind of a very safe way to implement um, Big Brother, I, I guess you could say. Um, so moving on to the next slide and switching gears to um, ClearBlade. ClearBlade is one of the niche vendors in the edge space that we are featuring for a couple of reasons. First, ClearBlade brings very well-defined software capabilities with, with asset tracking that directly targets a pocket of need to promote asset efficiencies and prevent asset, asset theft. It's often but not exclusively used in areas such as transportation, agriculture, and machine-heavy industries. And it's very important to note, though, that ClearBlade is not in a standalone silo that's industry or hardware-specific. These aren't you know, what we call railway guys or agriculture guys or fill-in-the-blank guys, because it really doesn't matter what the device is where they're getting the data from. ClearBlade has also been recently able to apply its asset tracking software capabilities to address some needs for contact tracing related to COVID-19 patients. And TBR believes that this could present some valuable opportunities for ClearBlade in the healthcare space, especially as the ongoing needs for reimagined care become more clearly defined. And in our last discussion with ClearBlade, they cited that they've signed to 15 new customers since the pandemic. So that's a really great indication of the uptick and need for this kind of technology that ClearBlade is able to provide. The second part is the collaborative underpinning of how they partner with and communicate their value proposition, and that really stood out to me. They've built an extensive network of partners to bring their solution to market, sometimes under white label, and even the way in which the value proposition is communicated shows the desire to breathe new life into old architectures and, they, and not to force customers to change where the investment has already been made. So now, why is ClearBlade an attractive partner to work with? There are some innate characteristics that relate to both the company's philosophy and approach, as well as how their solution is architectured. I'll first start with the solution. Because ClearBlade is designed to interact with other software seamlessly and is infrastructure agnostic, it immediately becomes a valuable partner in the enterprise edge compute market. Since the tangle of connection points between OIT devices, protocol gateways, and the cloud uh, can be beyond confusing and daunting, and I, I think that's an understatement. In the course of our discussions, I think I noted the term rat's nest uh, about three times, which probably resonates with you quite a few of you. And also on um, science experiment was, was brought up more than once as well. And both of these just really harken back to the in, intense amount of complexity that customers have to deal with and how uh, vendors like ClearBlade are really looking to kind of eliminate the fog and really help their clients get to their solutions faster. Um, you know, in that spirit, sec 
Second, um, the ClearBlade solution is flexible uh, and it's scalable and embraces turnkey automation. And there is no coding required. And we all know that, there's no, that there isn't nothing appealing about any of those aspects. And finally, and this is more of a rarity, um, the fact that the leadership is familiar with mainframe technology and promotes the use of technologies on a wide variety of hardware, especially in digital transformation efforts where flagship technology like mainframes are often overlooked. And I think with that point, it makes sense to go back to the philosophy of the leadership at ClearBlade, who make it clear that their most important priority is to cut through all the intricacies of technology and deployment and focus on bringing viable business outcomes to solve challenges as quickly as possible to customers. And so it's this notion of making things easier and driving business outcomes more quickly, which brings me to the right half of this slide. The introduction of um, what I believe is still a beta that ClearBlade is working on that I think can be best described as Edge's answer to what the cloud industry has been doing with marketplaces for a while. The underlying challenge driving what I will refer to, um, for lack of a better word, as the ClearBlade marketplace for now is simply that the buying process and underlying protocols involved in buying hardware can be also confusing and daunting, I think I've used those words a few times, with, with customers getting stuck in a cycle of procurement that can last far much longer than necessary, I mean, up to month, years or months and just beyond. What ClearBlade aims to do with this marketplace is to provide customers with a place to buy hardware and software packaged as one, to make it as turnkey as possible, but still with flexible and customizable options. When they're explaining it to us, one of my questions was around, well, how can something be flexible as well as turnkey? And the answer was more simple than I thought. It was that there are, you know, there are some commonalities that no matter what the problem is or what industry you're in, so there is going to, to, there is going to be a degree of turnkey solutioning no matter what. And at the same time, ClearBlade will add consultative assistance to help customers with complex buying decisions without the hazy confusion of too many options. In addition, the marketplace will enable customers to avoid the risk out of the gate. So only certified vendors will be featured on the site and there's kind of this innate quality control that will be there, which creates a combination of trust as well as a sort of guided, um, what I like to call a choose your own journey type of approach that should resonate really well with many customers. So uh, we're definitely looking forward to seeing how that beta goes and um, hearing more about um, updates on their new um, marketplace or you know, whatever you guys at ClearBlade decide to call it. Um, so moving on to um, the next slide, um, I've, you know, I've set the stage in what IBM is doing and then also what the ClearBlade value proposition and solution is. And what this really plays into is to set the stage for their recently announced partnership that was formalized just a few weeks ago. And um, so you know, we, we really appreciate the fact that it um, you know, coincided with, um, with our webinar because I think there's some really interesting things going on here that um, I'll be able to speak to. The partnership can best be introduced at the integration of IBM's Edge Application Manager with the ClearBlade Edge Asset Monitor, which together enables seamless and automated deployment of Edge applications. Now to cut beyond the quote unquote automated and seamless terminology, um, here is a breakdown of how the partnership works from a solutioning standpoint, as well as at how it mutually is beneficial to both organizations. ClearBlade Edge Asset Monitor is the application. It's the actual thing that gets the data from whatever the device is, whether it's a railway crossing or a mall video camera. ClearBlade processes the data and displays it to the end user at either the edge or the cloud. The IBM piece of the solutioning is that they are the ones that manage the application and puts it out onto the edge. So if you have thousands of gateways or crossings, IBM Edge Application Manager manages the deployment of the application. And so say if a piece of hardware fails, IBM makes sure that once replaced, the ClearBlade software is secure. And so what makes this such a good marriage for ClearBlade is that what IBM is doing, ClearBlade has had to build before in more rudimentary ways. Instead, now IBM can manage the connectivity and focus on the injection of machine data and act as a deployment mechanism to all of the end gateways and devices. Now, what IBM sees as a value add from ClearBlade, in addition to the benefits of an infrastructure agnostic approach, is that ClearBlade bring, brings that heritage of classical OT and IoT. As mentioned before, in the edge computing world, where the majority of the focus is on cloud native workloads, there is not a lot of classical OT or IoT expertise. And ClearBlade expertise here is a strong complement, especially in industries that run more legacy solutions. 
Now, in terms of existing or potential use cases, uh, the focus, as I mentioned before, uh, is on more heavy, heavy industries such as manufacturing and mining. But it's worth reiterating again here that the value ClearBlade brings is not a vertically specific one, and that the example that I'm going to give in Railray could be repurposed for any range of verticals. But that being said, the example that I'm going to use today is one uh, is a railway one, which is pretty simple to follow um, in terms of how both companies integrate together and for one particular solution. Let's start in the railway industry, the equipment that is used on the rail line, like cross gates and the signals on the road, have the intelligence to know when to raise and lower the gate. At the same time, there also has to be a monitoring mechanism for maintenance to make sure that equipment is functioning properly and to detect if and when there is a fault, which all rolls up to be a classic IoT problem. ClearBlade has created software that integrates with the IoT equipment to provide the analysis and the analytics which recognizes if it's operating properly and creates the alerts when there is an issue. IBM then gets the containers out of the cross guards and rail systems and distributes it with IBM Edge Application Manager to ensure deployment of the solution occurs at the right place and at the right time. Now beyond just joint solutioning alone, ClearBlade will also be formally joining IBM's Edge ecosystem, which is an initiative designed to help equipment manufacturers, networking, IT, and software providers implement open standards-based cloud native solutions that can autonomously manage edge applications at scale. So with this relationship, there are a lot of connection points, which hints that this is the beginning of a longstanding and fruitful relationship. So looking forward to hearing more from the relationship as well as the use cases as um, it, the relationship becomes more established. Now moving on to um, a different company, um, which is another one of, well, Kind of a slight backstory here. Um, Stephanie, if you could uh, move the slide forward. I was having trouble with that earlier. Um, so when we were sourcing some of our, um, our niche vendors, um, we came across a vendor which we thought was known as Pixium, but it's actually a vendor formerly known as Pixium, um, as we were not first aware that they had actually been acquired by Siemens. Um, so they actually kind of serve as an interesting use case that um, kind of helps us exemplify the fact that the market is indeed consolidating and that beyond partnerships alone, acquisition strategies are out there and are becoming a huge component. Um, like I said, when we initially reached out to Pixium, it was under the assumption that the company was indeed Pixium. And what we learned in reality was that in late 2019, they'd been acquired by Siemens. And in the course of the discussion, we received a history lesson as well as an understanding as to how a re recent acquisition can fold in and become successful to guide the edge strategy of one of the world's largest companies. When discussing their pre-acquisition days, the leadership spoke about how vital partners and channel partners were to help them grow and cited companies like Intel, Google, and National Grid, just to name a few. And while Pixium had offerings in other verticals, such as retail and hospitality, it really was their expertise in manufacturing and in the industrial space that was the driver behind the Siemens acquisition and it showcased the increasing importance of vertically, off of vertically oriented offerings. In terms of the solution itself, it is the openness through the control center access via the cloud and on-prem that's the primary value add. And the challenges that the solution solves for is that every facility is not using the same hardware in the same company and that there are a lot of customers with disparate applications that run in factories. To add to this, the lack of awareness of who is running at what level of expertise is really high. So together, these two factors boil down to what was referred to as multi-tenancy, meaning that there are lots of different roles and people and at different levels of competency within that have to be managed and who also are tasked with managing. Siemens solves for this with open control access, making their IT infrastructure usable, scalable, and manageable especially for audiences that may not have coding or IT experience. And this also serves as a strong complement to the advisory services and industry guidelines which Pixium brought to make Siemens Edge Solutions a leader in the market. So with that, I will um, intro the last and final section of our, of our webinar. So today we'll round out the discussion with a final section that provides a brief introduction into some of the other niche vendors that comprise our edge market landscape um, with a focus on both their capabilities as well as in some cases why they may present to be attractive partners. And so while we won't be going into the following niche players with nearly the degree of detail, I'll, I'll touch on these that we feature in the report and by all means, please feel free to re reach out to us if you have any more um, questions about any of these. 
Uh, so starting with Zaydata, um, Zaydata's core edge play is an edge orchestration tool called Edge Compute Engine. The fully open product assists customers with edge IoT orchestration at scale, which is key to making management and tracking of an increasing number of assets less cumbersome as edge sprawl persists. The value proposition in here is additionally boosted by the August launch of Zaydata's Open Edge ecosystem, which formalizes the avoidance of vendor lock-in and enables customers to select best of breed technology and service providers. Our assessment when completing the profile is that Zaydata came across as a highly desirable edge asset with baked in automation and security coupled with the open ecosystem. You know, these are all terms that I heard resonate and that I mentioned in, with a couple of the providers before. So there are certain some commonalities that come out when we're speaking about um, these different players, what they're focusing on. And even though they might have highly specific capabilities, there is a lot of compliments out there. And so as the data matures, we're definitely looking forward to seeing what they do as a viable competitor to see who they partner with and also what they do with regards to um, COVID-19 use cases, which were mentioned as an area of focus for them in the coming months. Now switching to Pivot3. Um, Pivot3, this is their quote, not mine, knows what it does best and focuses on it. Um, so at the enterprise edge, that is just boils down to video surveillance, recording, and analysis. Pivot3 lays an HCI foundation for its video-based use cases, which creates demand for its edge compute offerings. When we initially spoke of Pivot3, the focus was on enhancing their video surveillance capabilities to be optimized for the use case of widespread retail reopening. I'm not sure with the second wave of COVID looming that this will necessarily come to fruition. But with that being said, there's no reason that the company would not be able to apply the same capabilities to use cases like distance monitoring in hospitals or any of the kind of repurposing aspects that I mentioned at the start. Now, SWIM is a vendor that stands out as having the unique ability of being able to take large stores of data and convert them into meaningful insights through the software without storing the data itself. SWIM stands for Software in Motion, and the data, as described, is literally swims through their system, captured in an instance, and then moves through. Because the data itself is not stored, the speed at which insights can be gained is claimed to be faster than what competitors can offer. Use cases, especially in industries that demand low latency, may be there, and they will be an interesting one to watch and dig a bit deeper into over the next few months. Because as we've presented on them a couple of times before, the question always comes up, well, how does that work? Um, are they, how are they storing the analytics? How does that factor into machine learning? What about all the other interconnected pieces that relate to the cloud? So um, Swim is an interesting one and, and one that um, I think Stephanie and I will certainly expand upon in our next iteration. Now, finally, um, to end with Ori. Ori is a company built by engineers and focuses on the enablement of what it refers to as an edge cloud whose function is to address the shifting needs for latency and bandwidth. To do so, Ori develops software that moves workloads closer to and farther from the edge depending on latency demands. So the lower the latency demand, the closer to the workload is, is shifted to the edge. Our thought is that Ori could make an attractive partner for enterprise edge compute vendors seeking to add telcos as customers, as that's what its solutions are purpose-built to meet. And because 5G is central to telco strategies, Ori has also made a lot of moves to embrace 5G to enhance its existing capabilities, especially as this technology matures beyond um, just the buzzword of uh, 5G alone. So with that, um, before we get to questions, I'll briefly end that, you know, within the midst of all of this unknown, unknown and uncertainty, edge computing, a technology which is known to be to carry its own series of question marks, is starting to make a real significant impact in some critical ways. Um, adding the niche vendors to our report this time gave us a different flavor and a different appreciation for how quickly the market is changing in response to the different use cases. And you know, we really believe that the continued coverage of these new players and how they're partnering and interacting with some of the more legacy players will certainly shape the way that the market evolves and consolidates as time goes on. So we're interested as always to hear your feedback and um, and while well, as we incorporate new vendors and if one pops up that you think should be featured um, as a firm, we're always open to, to suggestions and um, we hope to hear from you. Uh, so with that, I will open up to um, probably have about 10 minutes or so for questions. Let's see, well, the first question, Thanks. Thanks, <laughs> will these, yeah, no, no problem. 
I was just going to ask them the first operational question of, will these slides be, email, be made available for download? Oh, Stephanie already answered that, yes. <laughs> Um, a question around why stack path, limelight, and section IO are not mentioned. Um, well, again, that, that goes back to we cannot include every vendor in, in the report. Um, we do seek to um, include vendors, um, other vendors and new vendors as we move forward. So, oh, I'm sorry, Stephanie, you actually already mentioned, and uh, sorry, answered those. Um, which vendors in particular are you envisioning on including in future reports? Um, that's something that we're working on at this very moment. Um, again, as I said in my closing remarks, we are always open to suggestions. If, um, for instance, one of the vendors that um, we feature is seeking to partner with another vendor, we always like that story. You know, it's shown by the um, IBM and Clearblade example. Um, so we're, we're in the process of sourcing new vendors and making sure that we cover a broad range of different capabilities. So no clear answer yet, but stay tuned for the um, February report. Um, and this is Stephanie. Just to reiterate, if you do have um, questions, you can submit them to us via that Q&A widget um, at the bottom of your screen. Um, and if you remember something you wanted to ask us after the webinar is over, you can email either uh, Nikki or I. Um, our, our contact information is up on the screen right now. Um, or you can also email webinars at tbri.com with your questions. Um, and if you'd like to receive a copy of this uh, deck following the webinar, um, then shoot an email over to webinars at tbri.com and someone will um, send it along to you. Perfect. And one, one last question. Um, Thank you, Eric. How do you see the edge market playing out in 2021? Um, that is certainly a crystal ball question. And uh, I mean, I could just reiterate the point that I think there'll be a lot more emerging and niche startup players. Um, we'll see a lot more activity on the smaller end of the spectrum. Um, and I think there'll be a lot more interest from the larger players in working with the smaller niche vendors as evidenced by that IBM Clearblade example. Um, I think that Edge will become much more integrated and accepted by people. Even back in February when we um, first released the report, there was still a lot of skepticism. There was even a lot of skepticism about cloud adoption. So as Edge being the extension of the cloud, it's just only natural that um, it will become much more tightly integrated into our lives and that the use cases that we featured before and that we still think are pretty cool now might even become rudimentary in uh, <laughs> three to four months. Um, I also think that the notion of marketplaces is a really important one and will help vendors and customers um, just have a more seamless way of interacting together. We'll create a more personal and pleasant shopping experience rather than kind of this whole notion of how do I adopt the edge and how do I go about it. So that example of um, you know, Clearblade offering their, their beta, I could see a lot of other vendors um, following suit and doing the same. Yeah, and something else that I think um, is going to happen a bit more in 2021 um, is, um, and I alluded to it earlier, but the increase in um, offering solutions as outcomes versus offering solutions as disparate pieces um, it seems that customers they really they really care more about achieving a specific goal than they do about what underpins or gets them to that point. Um, and so I think that there's this shift in marketing is happening and. And the vendors are reacting to that by by increasing the um, offering of of business outcomes, and I think that we'll see an increase in that in 2021 as well, especially as it pertains to to COVID related use cases. And I, I did see the question um, asked a couple of times about the um, the latency envelope of um, 10 milliseconds and the number of miles required for today's use cases. Um, I would love to comment on that further. I this is a question, though, that is best answered in conjunction with our, um, our colleague, Chris Antlitz, who has created that template or, or that threshold alongside of us. He is the author of the Telco Edge report. So we can certainly 
get with Chris just to make sure we're providing a complete answer and to um, answer any further questions that um, you have, Robert. So um, we can take that one offline alongside of Chris. And some of these that, um, some of these we'll just naturally we'll have to follow up on. Um, I see a question around Mobile Edge X. Um, Mohan, I can certainly get back to you on that. Want to make sure that you guys don't think we're, we're skipping any of these as we go. Um, do any of the vendors offer generic edge compute platforms? Um, the answer is yes, and I can, follow up with you, Frank, um, with a more complete list than I could probably just generate from the top of my head. So I'll make a note of that. Yeah, um, so um, if, you, if you asked a question and we haven't answered it live today, um, we, we're going to follow up with you via email after this webinar. Um, we like to sometimes connect, um, as Nikki had mentioned, with some other analysts on the team to ensure we give you um, a complete answer. And in a lot of cases, with the, as it pertains to Edge, that means that um, we'll have to connect with our telecom Edge compute counterparts to ensure that we can answer your um, question completely. So um, if we haven't answered your question live today, um, we, we didn't miss it. We, we'll just follow up with you via email following this call. Um, yep. So that's, that's what that's we anything else comes up. Sorry, Steph. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say, if anyone else has questions beyond or think of anything later, let us know. And um, I think this is the point well where we will um, thank you all for attending and um, spending the time with us today. It's very much appreciated. And um, we look forward to engaging with you all as we, we continue to learn about the space. Um, so and if you have a few have moments a great um, before you log off, please um, feel free to fill out that survey on your screen. Uh, it helps us as we're choosing webinar topics in the future to ensure that we're, we're choosing ones that you find engaging and relevant. Um, and if you visit um, t webinar, uh, our website, tbri.com, you can watch previous webinars on demand there, including this one as well. Um, and be sure to join on Wednesday, December 2nd for our next webinar amid the, pa the pandemic new offerings and new footprints for IT services vendors. Thanks and have a great rest of your day. Thanks everyone, take care.